This problem involves Nexium, a popular drug for treating acid reflux. So in this situation, we're told that as the little capsules come off the assembly line, uh, periodically they take samples of size 10 to carefully analyze whether uh, the capsules have uh, a active ingredient content of 40 milligrams. That's the target amount. And being too big or too small in that number is both bad. So we wind up with a hypothesis test that's really two-sided, like this one here. And our hypothesis tests are going to be carried out at the significance level alpha equals 0.02. Okay, so that's a smallish significance level. Okay, now what the question asks is to, we're asked to find both the, the probability of a type 2 error and the power of such a test um, if the population mean is actually 39.8. So remember, the power gives a measure of the sensitivity. What's the likelihood that we correctly reject the null hypothesis? if the real population mean is 39.8 instead of 40. All right, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. First, let's figure out for what values of x bar we're going to reject H0 and for which values we won't. So if we draw our sampling distribution, under the null hypothesis, the mean is 40. And it's a two-sided hypothesis test. So what's going to happen is we're going to reject H0 if we're too far away from 40 in either direction. So there's this area here or this area up here. Now, since alpha is 0 0.02, and we're interested in ultimately computing the probability of a type 2 error in the power, what we need to do first is figure out, okay, what are these cutoff values here? So these are the places where if we're outside of them with our sample mean, then we're going to reject H0. If we're inside in here, we won't. So we know the area in the middle here is 0.98. These areas over here are 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. We just divide the remaining 0 0.02 of alpha between the two tails. OK, well, uh, what are the numerical values here? Well, we could say that sigma, this is now the standard deviation for the sampling distribution, is equal to what? Um, we're told the population has a standard deviation of 1.5, and then we divide that by the square root of 10. That's our sample size. That turns out to be about equal to 0 .4, uh, 4, 7, 4, 3, say. Okay, so one way to find this cutoff value is to use, uh, use norm env. We know we want a probability of 0 0.01. We've got a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 0 .4743. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll bring up Excel. Leftovers here from previous work, that's fine. So we've got norm env of, what, 0.01. We have a mean, remember, of 40. And our standard deviation is 0.4743. And this gives us 38.897, say. So if our sample mean is less than this number, we'd re reject H0. On the other hand, if it's bigger, well, it can't be too much bigger. Specifically, it, it, we're not going to reject H0 until we hit this value up here. Now, we could get this in a couple ways. Uh, one way is to go back to Excel. The area to the left of this line is 0.99. So we could do that. That's one possibility. Actually, we can just go back to our previous entry here and just change the 0.01 to 0.99. This time we get 41.103. Okay, so there's our cutoff. So again, remember, if we're out here, we reject. And if we're out here, we reject. Now, remember, we're asked to calculate the probability of a type 2 error and the power if the real population mean is actually equal to 39.8. Now that's not a whole lot different than this, so that's a tall order for the hypothesis test, but let's see what we get if we actually do this. So scroll down just a smidge here. So we're going to draw in a second distribution. Let's see here. So the mean is now 39.8, so maybe this looks about like this. Something like this. Here's the new mean. 39.8. Now if we come down here like this, we have this area here. Remember this is still 38.897. And bring that one straight down like this. This is still 
of 3. So the area of the two tails together is going to be the power because that represents the probability that we reject the null hypothesis if the true population mean is 39.8. That's not looking very big, but uh, well, we can certainly find out what it is easily enough. So that area right there can be found by using norm dist with 38.897 for the x value, 39.84 the mean, and the same standard deviation as before. So let's, we'll go ahead and do this one, and we'll and I'll just report the news on this one over here. All right. Norm dist number 38.897 for the x value. The mean is now 39.8. Same standard deviation as before, right? 0.4743. And true, because we do want it to be cumulative. So we get something pretty small, 0.0285, say. We'll just round to those decimal places. Uh, if we do something similar up here, again using Excel, I'll just report the news, it turns out to be pretty close to 0.003. Okay, so the power is the sum of those two numbers, so 0 0.0585. All right, so that's not very big. Again, remember, that's the probability that if the real population mean is 39.8, that our hypothesis test will actually pick this up and produce something that uh, well, rather, cause us to reject the null hypothesis. So that's fairly low. Now, a type 2 error is made when we don't do that. So in other words, when the null hypothesis is false, but we don't recognize it from our data. So the probability of a type 2 error is just 1 minus the power. So 1 minus 0 0.0585. And that is 0 0.9415. 